Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. In today's video, let's create a simple and relaxing landscape painting together. There will be no complex shading, just some very simple technique. I will walk you through it step by step. For additional guidance and the list of all supplies, you can download the step by step worksheet from my website. It's free to download and you can find the link in the description. For this drawing, I'll be using Ohuhu's new bleed-proof double-sided marker pad. Thanks for Ohuhu for sending me these sketchbooks. I have had many people ask me for a recommendation for bleed-proof sketchbook. Here is a comparison between the mixed media paper I like using and Ohuhu's new marker pad. As you can see, there is no bleeding on the back of the Ohuhu paper at all. This marker pads come in two sizes and you can find the links in the description as well. During the sketch process, I will also share the pros and cons of this new Ohuhu paper, such as how well it blends, what about its ability to absorb heavy ink. This way you will know if this marker pad is suitable for you or not. Without further ado, let's get started. Let's start with a pencil outline first. For this drawing, I'll be using this photo as inspiration. The photo is in landscape format, but I want my drawing to be in portrait format. To begin, I'm drawing a rule of third grid to guide my composition. If you find the pencil outline hard to see, don't worry. I have created a worksheet that you can download which includes a clean outline for your reference. One good feature about this Ohuhu marker pad is that it's very easy to use pencil on it, and when I use my kneaded eraser, it's easy to erase without smudging. I'm going to place a windmill at the intersection of the grid. I'm positioning the horizon line on the upper third grid to create a balanced view. I would like to include a lake in the background here. Keep your pencil very light because we will be erasing it shortly. At this stage, I'm designing the composition of the drawing, so I will go back and forth and make changes as needed. Once you have finished the pencil outline, go ahead and erase it. We are going to use the light yellow marker to lightly trace it. Another approach is to erase one line at a time and trace it before erasing the next line, which will make it easier.
that's all about our line. Pretty simple, right? Let's move on to the coloring part. For the flowers, grab an orange color or any color you like. I prefer using the chill tip to draw white marks to form the flower's shape. Make the flower at the very front larger and the ones in the back smaller to create depths. Using size difference is one of the ways to create perspective. One challenge of using this paper is that the color will appear darker when you first put it on while it's still wet. It takes a couple of minutes to dry and then it will show its true color. You can see the orange color I used looks darker at the very beginning, but later after it dries, it becomes much lighter, which is the true color of this marker. I think when you make a paper 100% bleed proof, this is a compromise it comes with. I've done many videos showing how to draw a grass field before, and the same technique applies here. Follow the same direction to apply your marker strokes. Starting with a very light pressure in the beginning stage, the paper is semi-smooth, making it easier to brush the marker and achieve nice, smooth strokes. However, the challenge is that it won't create feathering, so the strokes will appear sharp. Additionally, where the stroke overlap, you may notice clear overlap marks at the beginning. When it comes to the area around the flower, try not to cover it too much. It will be fine if you accidentally draw over it. Now let's come back to the flower part. Use a more vibrant color to repeat the process. Here, I'm using a bright green color to enrich the tone of the grass, but it is optional. Now, let's draw some stems. I'm going to use a brush tip, but you can totally use a chill tip as well. Simply draw some short lines under each flower. Make sure they have different lenses and try to avoid them too parallel and repetitive. Use thicker, longer lines at the front and thinner lines at the back.
Now use a darker green to add dark values to the flower stems. You can decide how many green colors you like to use. Normally, three shades of green are enough to create depths. I tend to use more than three shades, but it is optional. Depending on the green you use, it will give you drawing a different feeling. While waiting for the ink to dry, let's draw some trees. Remember all the trees we have drawn in the past. Here it is much simpler, since this drawing is small and the trees are in the background. We don't need to add much shading or stroke detail. Just focus on overall shape at first. To color the windmill, I use a light yellow first on the lighting side, then use blue-gray on the shadow side. Just be very gentle with your marker strokes, so they don't leave strong marks and blend well. The paper's blending ability is okay, but not as good as the mixed media paper I like to use. When I layer a lot of ink at the same time, the paper will show some light noise. However, you will not notice it unless you look very closely. So make sure you don't layer too much ink at once. Wait for it to dry a little before adding more color. Use the same color to add shading to the tree as well. Try not to make the tree very three-dimensional. Objects further back will appear vague and less detailed. So there is no need to spend too much effort on them. So far it's been pretty simple, right? If you are having a hard time following along, don't stress out, go easy on yourself. I've done six draft drawings before this final draft. Enjoy and trust your drawing process and strive to finish it. You will learn many things along the way.
To refine the edge of the door, I use a color pencil, but it is optional. Since the windmill is also in the background, we don't need much shading on it either. A little core shadow will be enough. Try to keep the light side as light as you can. I think I put too much dark value, so I will use white paint to fix it later. Now let's add some purple flowers, have fun with it, use a color that makes you happy. Before we continue adding dark values, let's draw some clouds. There are many ways you can draw the sky. Here is the first draft I did. I also have a separate video on how to draw clouds. I will put a link in the right corner. For the final version, I decided to draw different styles of clouds to see how it looks. Start with a pencil outline to decide the shape of the cloud. Loosely draw some different sizes of curves. Drawing the curves can get tricky, so I recommend sketching circles first, which I demonstrated on the worksheet you can download. Once you are happy with your cloud's shape, erase the pencil outline. Start with a very light blue color to trace it. Now we won't color the clouds themselves, instead we will fill in the negative space, which is the area around the cloud. I like using diagonal strokes to fill in, keep your marker stroke direction consistent. You can use horizontal strokes if you like, it will give the clouds a different motion. In some areas we can layer more ink to make it darker and give the sky more layers. To make your clouds colorful, you can add additional colors you like, such as pink, purple, or orange. Choose any color you feel at the moment.
From here, we can continue adding dark values to the rest of the drawing. The mountains can be very light and vague. Here, I think I made a mistake by making them too dark and distinguishable. Give the flowers more layers and more details, so they will stand out more and enhance the drawing steps. Now it's time to add a highlight. You can use any white paint you like. We can use white paint to define the edge of the cloud as well. If you have an orange colored pencil, you can outline the flower a little bit, just some of them. From here, it's a good time to take a break. Come back with fresh eyes to look at your drawing before continuing to add darker colors. Here, I tried to push through and finish the drawing, so I made a mistake by adding too much dark gray on the windmill. Later, I will use white paint to lighten it, but it will make the color look a bit dirty. Here, I'm continuing to add small details but you can totally stop here. This is a very simple landscape scene. Keep it light. So wrapping up my thoughts on Ohuhu new mark paper. For its bleeding proof ability, it is 100% bleed proof and double sided, which also helps save paper and is environment friendly. So for those who like to use both sides of the paper and do not want to see any bleeding on the back, this is a very great choice. I personally don't mind paper bleeding to the next page, as it doesn't affect my technique. The paper won't create feathering, which many people will prefer, but personally I like paper that makes ink feather out a little bit, so the ink will blend together like watercolor when I do landscape painting. However, if you draw portraits or other styles of art, you may like this paper a lot better. For its blending ability, blending gets easier in the middle and late stage of the drawing, 
as the paper already has a base layer of marker ink. At the beginning, it does give me a hard time to draw the grass because the strokes doesn't blend well together at first. One of the advantage of this paper is that it uses less ink. Very light pressure and a quick sweep can evenly color an area. It helps save your ink in the long run. But it means you need to give it time to dry before heavily layering more ink on top. No matter what types of paper you use, it takes some time to practice and get used to it. The pressure you use and controlling the timing to layer ink are very important. It's something hard to explain in one video. If you are interested to learn more about it or have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. I hope you enjoying this video. Thank you so much for watching and drawing along with me. I will see you in the next video.